Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this three-part video series, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the hibiscus layette set. In the first video, I'm going to show you how to make these adorable baby booties. Then in the second video, I'm going to show you how to make the hat. The hat also starts with the flower and then we continue on and make the hat from the flower base. And then in the third and final video, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous motif blanket. This blanket uses five colors of Be So Baby yarn. You can follow the link in the video description to download the pattern with charts for all three pieces. And as we go along in this video series, I'm also going to show you, or give you suggestions rather, on how to use these different techniques for different types of projects if you're not necessarily going to make them as the baby layette. The Hibiscus Crochet Motif Blanket, Hat, and Booties. This project takes a simple motif and transforms it into a brilliant kaleidoscopic palette of five complementary colors of yarn. The motif blanket has a delicate floral edging and the hat and booties feature a three-dimensional flower that is crocheted into the fabric. Let's get started. To make the booty, we start with the flower and you want to start by tying your yarn to your crochet hook. We're going to do it in the four colors, but if you wanted to do it in one color, you could do that as well. The flower begins with a chain five and slip stitch to the fifth chain from your hook to form a ring. Round one begins with a chain three and work two treble crochets in the ring. Yarn over twice, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. That's one treble crochet. We'll do that again. Chain three and slip stitch in the ring. And that's one of our four petals is completed. We're going to do that three more times. At the end of round one, you should have four petals in the ring. And this is what the end of round one should look like. Round two begins with a chain three. And working behind the petal just made, we'll single crochet into the next slip stitch. So that chain three space ends up being behind the petal. And we'll repeat that around chain three, working behind the next petal single crochet in the next slip stitch, chain three, working behind the next petal, slip stitch, or single crochet in the next slip stitch, chain three, working behind the next petal, slip stitch, into the beginning of the round. So then we have four chain three spaces on the back side of our work and that you cannot see them from the front side of the work where you see the four petals from round one. We're going to cut our yarn and fasten off. Okay, the next petals are done in Orchid. That was Colorway Diva that we used there. And so next we're going to use Colorway Orchid. I'll tie our yarn again. And you want to slip stitch into any of those chain three spaces on the previous round in those chain three spaces behind our work. And then round three is chain three. And we'll work five treble crochets in that same chain three space. Yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. We'll do that for a total of five times in the same chain three space. Chain three and slip stitch in the same chain three space. 
and now working again behind the petals of round one in the chain three spaces of round two behind your work, we're going to slip stitch into the next chain three space, chain three, five treble crochets, chain three, and slip stitch into the same chain three space. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. What your work should look like at the end of round three, and we will fasten off. For round four, we'll grab our third color of yarn. This is colorway violet, and tie our yarn to our crochet hook again. If you were used doing all of this in one color of yarn, you obviously wouldn't need to do this. And we're going to join with a slip stitch into one of the slip stitches between the petals and chain five. And working behind the last petals made, we're going to slip stitch into the next slip stitch. chain five, working behind the next petal, slip stitch into the next slip stitch, chain five, working behind the next petal, slip stitch into the next slip stitch, chain five, and slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. So round four, you can only see from the back side of the work and it is four chain five spaces. Round five begins with a slip stitch into that first chain five space, chain three, and we'll work five treble crochets, chain three, and th chain three, five treble crochet, chain three, and slip stitch into each of the chain five spaces around. This is what your work should look like at the end of round five. We have three different colored petals and each of the petals are worked separately and worked behind the previous row. Isn't it beautiful? So now we'll fasten off at the end of round five and we're ready to begin the booty portion. Obviously, this flower would be beautiful on its own or as a component to something else. And even when we work the first round of the booty, you'll see that this could easily become a three-dimensional motif as well. So we'll start by tying our yarn to our crochet hook. And round six, we're going to join with a slip stitch to any of those slip stitches between two petals. and chain five and working behind a petal slip stitch in the next slip stitch between the two petals chain five slip stitch in one of the slip stitches between the two petals and repeat this around and join with a slip stitch to the first slip stitch at the beginning of the round to join. Notice just like with the flower, the first round of the booty is really worked on the back side of our work. That's what the end of round six should look like. Round seven begins with a slip stitch into the first chain five space, chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and work five more double crochets in that same space. A double crochet is yarn over your hook, Insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We want a total of five. So 
So we have a chain three and five double crochets in that first chain five space. Now in the next chain five space, we're going to work six double crochets. And we'll repeat that around. We're going to work six double crochets in each chain five space around. At the end of round seven, slip stitch to the first double crochet at the beginning of the round to join. The first double crochet was a chain three that counted as a double crochet. And that's what the end of round seven should look like. You can see more of it from the back side, but as we grow our booty now, you'll end up seeing it on the front side as well. Round eight begins with a chain 18 skip the next six stitches one two three four five six and slip stitch in the next stitch Chain three counts as our first double crochet. One double crochet in each of the next 17 stitches. At the end of round eight, slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what the end of round eight should look like. Round nine begins with a chain three, which counts as our first double crochet, and you want to work one double crochet in each stitch around. And this is what the end of round nine should look like. Round 10 begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. Double crochet three together, yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. We'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. Then one double crochet into each of the next 12 stitches. And then work double crochet three together two times, just like we did on the other side of this round.
and then one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. This is what the end of that round should look like. And you notice that the decreases at both the heel and the toe are starting to turn our work towards the inside, which is important because at this point we're ready to cut our yarn. And you want to cut your tail extra long at this point because it will be that tail that we're going to use to sew up the seam of the booty. So with your yarn needle, you thread that long tail on your yarn needle and you can sew between both thicknesses to do to close up that seam at the bottom of the booty. After sewing up the one side, because our tail started in the middle, I thread my tail back through to the middle to then do the second side of the seam with the same yarn and tail. And once you finish doing that, you'll have this adorable booty that just needs the cuff put on. So you finish sewing up the seam and then I'll show you how to add the cuff. Okay, so to begin our cuff, we'll use the same color yarn that we used for the booty. And we'll tie our yarn back to our crochet hook. And now join with a slip stitch into any of the stitches along here or any of the chains along this side. What we're going to do is work one double crochet into each stitch and chain around for a total of 24 double crochets. So I'll start by joining in any one, it doesn't matter. And you'll join with a slip stitch, chain three, counts as your first double crochet, and one double crochet into each chain and stitch around for a total of 24. Okay, so I've worked all the way around the three loops of the chains and now turning my work, going to work into the instep and work a double crochet into each of those stitches there as well. Okay, when you've reached all the way around, you will slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join, and you should have a total of 24 double crochets at the end of this first round of the cuff. Round two begins with a chain two, which does not count as our first stitch, and we're going to work a front post double crochet around the first stitch. So it's a yarn over your hook, insert your hook from front to back to front around the post of the double crochet below, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. That's a front post double crochet. Around the next stitch, we're going to do a back post double crochet, yarn over your hook, insert your hook from back to front to back around the post of that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And you're going to repeat this all the way around, front post double crochet, then back post double crochet. At the end of the round, you want to slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. Remember, the first stitch was the front post double crochet. The chain two did not count as a stitch. And then round three, we're going to repeat round two, which starts with a chain two that does not count as a stitch, and front post double crochet around the front post double crochet, and back post double crochet around the back post double crochet. And you repeat that all the way around. Slip stitch to the top of the stitch at the beginning of the round to join. And this is what your finished baby booty will look like. You'll obviously want to make two. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to watch the other videos in this series to get all the tips and tricks for making the hibiscus baby layette set. If you have any questions at all, please always feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.